Should you invest in LAM research? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is split into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis normalizes the data so that we can compare companies between sectors. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I'll remind you that this is a long-term analysis, not something you should trade in and out of. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. Let's first look at the business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business asks the question, is the company a good business to own? I place the most importance on the business because it tells us everything about how the company works. Aside from the final grade, this is where you should put all your focus in this analysis. There are six metrics that make up the business factor, from growth and efficiency to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business. First, growth, which accounts for 30% of the business factor. Growth looks at all the company's growth data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the long-term growth rate of the company. The models tell us that a growth rate of 15% is considered average. Here's our long-term growth rate and growth grade. Next, margins, which accounts for 15%. Margins looks at all the company's dollar output data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the company's output generated for every dollar it keeps for further investments and so forth. The models tells us that a margin rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our margin rate and margins grade. Third, operations, which accounts for 10%. Operations looks at all the company's ratio data against its market price and optimizes it into a single ratio, telling us how effectively the company is running its business. Simply, is the company wasting money as it conducts business? The models tell us that an operations ratio of 12.5 is considered average. Here's our operations ratio and operations grade. Fourth, debt utilization, which accounts for 10%. Debt utilization looks at all the debt that a company has on its books and determines whether enough money is coming in to repay those liabilities. How much debt is being used to fuel the company's growth? It's optimized into a single ratio. The models tell us that a debt ratio of 0.75 is considered average. Here's our debt ratio and debt utilization grade. Fifth, efficiency, which accounts for 10%. Efficiency looks at all the money generated from the company to see if it's using that money to grow, expand, and innovate further. It's optimized into a percentage. The model tells us that an efficiency rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our efficiency rate and efficiency grade. Lastly in the business factor is market dominance, which accounts for 25%. Market dominance looks at various competitive data points such as market share or primary product or services, market cap, strength, or competitors, and size of customer base. It's optimized into a tier ranking. The models tells us that a market dominance tier 5 is considered average. Here's our tier number and market dominance grade. To recap, here's the 6 metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our business grade. Let's then look at the stock. The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock asks the question, will the company's stock perform well enough in the future to justify an investment? I place this much importance on the stock because we still want to hold an asset that grows over the long run, and a good history of stock growth and a good entry is key to long-term success. There are four metrics that make up the stock factor, from performance to Wall Street. Each are weighted based on importance to the price. First, stock performance, which accounts for 30% of the stock factor. Performance looks at how well the company's stock has done over a 1, 3, 5, and 10 year period, if applicable, and then compares it with the same timeframes as its sectors and that of the S&P 500. It's optimized into a percentage to see how well the company's stock has grown. The models tell us that a performance rate of 0% is considered average. Here's our performance rate and performance grade. Next are dividends, which accounts for 30%. Dividends looks at how much the company is paying out to shareholders as a percentage yield. 
signifying a considerate and consistent income source for long-term investors. The models tells us that a dividend yield of 1.75% is considered average. Here's our dividend yield and dividends grade. Third, technicals, which accounts for 20%. Technicals looks at all the chart data focusing on the 50 and 200 day moving averages, along with the stock's RSI to give us an idea of what shorter term investors see or hope for. It's optimized as a percentage. The models tells us that a technical rate of 5% is considered average. Here's our technical rate and technical grade. Lastly, in the stock factor is Wall Street, which accounts for 20%. Wall Street looks at the conclusive grades other analysts have given the company. The data is optimized as a ratio that tells us the sentiment of what Wall Street thinks of the company. The model tells us that a Wall Street ratio of 3 is considered average. Here's our Wall Street ratio and Wall Street grade. To recap, here's the four metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? I place the least importance on price because you should prioritize the business and stock before looking at the price per share. The price will tell us when to invest, but not why you should invest. The price factor only consists of one metric, the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value figures out the fair value price of the company using a discounted cash flow model with a leaning towards the conservative side to provide a robust margin of safety, we can answer the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? A stock price higher than the fair value price is considered overvalued, a stock lower than that is considered undervalued. The models tell us that an intrinsic value of 0% is considered fairly valued. Here's our intrinsic value and price grade. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and its type of investment. This analysis uses public financial data, research, and a proprietary algorithm to come up with this company's grades. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Want to talk business? Email me and follow the instructions on the screen. Invest wisely, and as always, take care of your money.